Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in today's video, I have something new to share with you guys. Dimitri has been working on a new script. So rather than go into a long introduction here, let me just go ahead and switch camera views and we're just gonna jump right into it. So I'm gonna put my camera over on the left side because I think we're going to have some text over here at some point. All right, so when Orbiter first comes up with the new script, this is what we're looking at. And uh, as always, before we get too far into it, I'll give you kind of a cutoff point so I can tell you, you know, if you just want to see everything cold without uh, seeing me go through it, then that's the point you should stop. But right now we're just going to look at the introduction. All right, here we go. Direct landing. Let me get rid of that bar at the top. You are transporting essential personnel to the moon, a routine flight that you have done so many times. Your Delta Glider is about one hour away from Lunar Periapsis, when suddenly... BAM! What just happened? I'll talk about this Easter egg here in a moment. <laughs> Sir, we've lost pressure on LOX tanks 1 and 2. We are venting our oxygen into space. Cut the valves to the oxygen tanks and switch to cabin locks. That will last us for less than an hour. We need to land now. And in this particular version, let me just go down to uh, 0 0.1. In this particular version, Dimitri took like a screenshot of one of my videos or something and superimposed my face on top of the, uh, the pilot there. That was a really amusing Easter egg. I appreciate that. All right, so here's the deal. We are spinning out of control, as you can see. Let me take a look here. If I zoom out a little bit and switch the camera to one of these other views, like so, you can see we are, uh, I don't quite know where the moon's at in reference to us, but the moon's around here somewhere. And we're spinning out of control because we've sprung an oxygen, uh, one of our oxygen tanks, our, our, our oxygen tanks have exploded and we're venting air so we're just spinning out of control and if we don't land within this amount of time we are going to die we're going to run out of locks and die so well right away uh, so I'll say this is the cutoff point if you don't want to see me do anything at all uh, please stop watching the video right now and that way it won't spoil anything for you all right for those of you who uh, just kind of want to watch me go through it go ahead and continue on all right, so the first thing, since we're spinning out of control, I feel like it makes sense to kill my rotations. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and use the virtual cockpit for this flight. And again, I'll try to minimize the camera panning. So let's kill rotate just to stop ourselves spinning around. And our MFDs are off. Uh, again, we can power these up without switching cockpit views by using the shift keys. If I want to power up the left side, I press the shift key on the left side and hit escape. If I want to power up the right side, I press the shift key on the right side of the keyboard and hit escape. Now both my MFDs are online. So we are 3,400 and you know something seconds away from lunar periapsis. We have 55 minutes to land. So we can tell if we tried to do a normal landing here, you know, we wouldn't have enough time because, you know, what, what is this? What is an hour? You know, an hour is, what, 3,600 seconds. So, you know, if we come all the way over here to periapsis, do a breaking burn, get into orbit, try to line up with the base, all that, we're going to die. We don't have time to do that. So we have to figure something else out. Let me bring up map on this side. Uh, well, luckily, we are already lined up with the base, so at least we have that going for us. Let's zoom in a little bit. And... So we can see, you know, Brighton Beach is, you know, here. So let's go ahead and target Brighton Beach. And scroll up. Zoom in a little bit. Up. And, okay, so I think one thing we might be able to do. So what, what can we do? Let's, let's go retrograde. So we'll put the vessel into the retrograde position. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. So one idea I have is maybe uh, if we burn down our, you know, because this is our orbit track. So if we do a burn, a main engine burn, to burn down an orbital track so that it lands on top of the base. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see that track. 
and we also have a delta v concern here so we can't just burn fuel you know indefinitely okay so that's coming down maybe a bit more so we you know we can't just you know burn like i said indefinitely we have to uh have a plan here so this i'm thinking what this will do will you know get us lined up so that you know we're uh, on track for the base and and we're not going to blow past it um, hopefully so it looks like maybe let me see so okay so it looks like we're currently on track for the base so let's let's leave that alone because we once we get closer to the base then we can <clears throat> you know we can decelerate but we don't want to use up all of our fuel just yet all right so let me turn off that retrograde autopilot let's bring up so one thing we can think about too is communications so when we get over the landing pad we're going to want to be able to land on the landing pad so let's get that set up let's go to brighton beach and let's put in our long range on nav one which is 11630 so let's get that dialed in really quick wrong way 11630 and let's put the let's just go with landing pad one it might be better to choose one over the other but let's just go with landing pad one so we'll go 13220 and that's going to be landing pad one okay so and let's maybe think about setting our vertical speed to some number so that once we get near you know if we get in a panic situation we can quickly set our vertical speed uh, we can quickly set the hover hold so that we don't drop really fast all right so let's see we're a ways out about 715 kilometers let me just go ahead and warp time forward get in a bit closer because right now we're really high up so yeah let's just warp time forward boy that time is going by fast <laughs> oh boy we're all suffocating all right we're 210 kilometers out we're still at 2500 kilometers it's not looking good folks all right let me go back to here make sure I have my long range I'm too high up though I can't pick it there's no way we're gonna run out of time all right well let's see let's uh, let's see where we're at yeah we're really high up we still have to we still have to slow down or rather we still have to get down by over 2,500 kilometers well all right so this was a learning experience let's go have more time for it okay so it looks like the the panic breathing wears off at time warp or stops uh stops when you're under time warp yeah we only have 45 seconds left all right we're not going to make it so well we learned a few things from this flight so at least we can retry it and maybe try something else all right, so obviously we're not going to make it, so I'm just going to go ahead and warp time forward. And let us run out of time. Maybe we'll see what happens when we run out of time. So everybody's dead. All right, let's try again. We still have time. That was abrupt. All right, let's view our flight record. You've made one attempt and you have not succeeded yet. You have zero crashes on the lunar surface and the crew has suffocated one time. Well, okay. Um, all right, so first, for the sake of time, we won't play the intro again. So there's our big bang. And we have, uh, and this is a slightly randomized amount of time. All right, we're not spinning as bad, but we still need to kill our rotation. All right, shift escape. Shift escape, bring up our MFDs. Uh, okay, luckily it kept what we had. All right, well, I know one thing we can do. Is, so we, we know we have interplanetary MFD available to us, uh, at least if it's installed. 
and from other flights that we've done we know that we can use its uh, base approach program I believe so that we can get lined up with the base maybe we'll go that route so and let's do it won't be re-entry orbit insert yeah I guess it'll be re-entry and we'll use the old one because it gives us access to more information and what do we need to change here so we need the latitude and longitude of the base which we have here so I'm going to set my longitude for 33.44 W. I guess I have to put it in as a negative number. So negative 33.44. Yeah, there we go. Now it's west. And our latitude of 41.13. And altitude of the base, we have that here. No, we don't. I think we actually do see that, just not in this view. Mm, okay, so we're not getting it here, but I think if we bring up the object info, select the base for Brighton Beach, and mm, no, we don't get it here either. All right, well, all right, we'll, we'll worry about the altitude later. Uh, let me think about this. Well, we do know that. F hmm. Let me target Brighton Beach. Let me think about this for a second. So, if I go into getting a lot of emails, what if I bring up VOR or GPS VTOL? Will that give me the base altitude? So again, we know that it's 33.4 W41.13. North. And this does not give me the base altitude either. OK. And I forgot, actually, we can just get Brighton Beach from, from GPS uh, VTOL. We don't have to type it in. Let me think, what other MFD would give me the altitude of Brighton Beach? I don't think arrow break would. Well, yeah, why would it? Orbit's not going to give it to me. Yeah, no. Okay, so let's just set it for zero until we have better information. All right, now, so MJD, anticipation angle, so we don't know what that's going to be, so let's just leave it alone. And when do we want to do the burn? So we have upwards, or rather, we, when are we going to touch down, reentry time? We have upwards of an hour, well, not quite, we have 55 minutes. So let's set this for, say, half that value, or let's just say 30 minutes. So uh, 60, so 1,800 seconds. However, that's going to cost us a significant delta V. Do we think we need 25 minutes to land? I'm going to say no. So let's go a bit higher than, than 1,800. Let's instead say, what about 2,500? That would still leave us some time to land and that cuts our DV down significantly. So let's try that. That should still give us enough time to land. And that should get us lined up with the base. Let's bring back up map. And yeah, I always thought map MFD gave us the altitude base, but it's fine. We'll, we'll go with what we have here. And bring up the burn vector and let's burn this maneuver. Bit of time warp to speed it up, and it automatically takes us out of time warp and brings us down. And let's zoom out. Okay, so well, that's a bit unfortunate. So I guess our timing wasn't quite right, or maybe because of the altitude. But we don't have. We're not going to run out of energy at the base. We're going to run out of energy before we get to the base. 
So with that in mind, rotation. let's go to rotation and let's go prograde. A little bit of time work to speed up that process of turning the vessel. And if we put in maybe just a bit more prograde, maybe we can kind of help out the autopilot so that we ensure that we're landing or that we ensure that we're running out of energy. Basically our orbital line, we want it to stop on the base. All right, so that's not really helping. Um, all right, well, let's just go with what we have. And when we get to this point, we'll plan on hovering the rest of the way over to the base. Not sure if we have all the fuel for that, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let's get a bit closer to the base. We're still way up in the air. Well, air, way up in space. And it looks like we are a little better on our timing at least. And I think that's probably because when we went retrograde the first time, we slowed ourselves down so much. Let's get down to a thousand kilometers. All right, so how far are we away from the base? We're still quite a ways out. So we need, all right, let's see here. So let's bring up a generic camera and take a look. So that's our front facing view. So let's get a bit lower. And we're still moving down towards the ground at 3,300 meters a second. That's pretty fast. All right, but we do have 15 minutes remaining. Okay, so we're 200 kilometers up. We should probably think about going level with the ground. That way, because we're going to have to burn off a lot of vertical speed here. We still have 14 minutes left. We still have, but that's a long way to go. We still have 700 kilometers to go. So we don't want to take out any forward velocity at this point. Okay, so let's, so we're, we're rotating a little bit here. Let's make sure that we're pointing towards Brighton Beach and translation, rotation. Oh boy. We are sinking fast. Let's get rid of some of this vertical speed. Otherwise, we are going to slam the ground. I don't know if I turned that on in time. Hopefully, I did. 47 kilometers up. Boy, we are going down fast. Yikes. 20 kilometers up. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mmm. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. All right. All right, let's turn off our autopilot. All right, so that has us pretty close to 20 minutes on this part of the video. So this is a difficult challenge. All right. Well, we didn't make it, but we will try this again in another video. Uh, check the description down below for a link where you can download this and try it out for yourself and also check the description down below for a link where I'll, I have a, I'm going to create a video uh, showing how to do an installation of this, of, this, uh, of this new script. Let me have all kinds of things firing here. So. Oh, we crashed twice in one mission. That's a new one. All right, well, that's going to end it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. And yeah, how many, how many attempts do you think it's going to be before I can successfully land at Brighton Beach in the time allocated? So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.